You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is Season 1, Episode 2, Creating a Win-Win by Hiring a Virtual Assistant. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Liberty Entrepreneurs. Today, I'm interviewing my first virtual assistant. His name is Dexter. We've been working together for several months now, and he is an absolute critical part of keeping this show on the air. The title of this episode is Creating a Win-Win. And what I mean by that is because both people have entered in to this business arrangement, this business partnership voluntarily, then they must think that they get the better end of the deal. And I think I get a better end of the deal by having Dexter working for me for the salary that I pay him and all the processes that I have to set up to get him up and started and teach him what it means to integrate into my business. And Dexter feels like he is getting more value out of the relationship from his salary, being able to work from home, the time off that I give him, the flexible schedule when compared to what his other options are in the Filipino job market. So that's the goal of today's podcast. I hope you find a lot of value in it. On the show today, I'm really pleased to have my first virtual assistant, Dexter, on the line. Hey, Dex, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for inviting me here, Ash. So Dexter and I have been working with each other for what, Dex? Six or seven months now? It's almost seven months now. Oh, wow. That's great, man. And we met each other through a virtual assistant matchmaking service. We won't say their name on the air, but it was it was a mediocre service and I just was not impressed with them. But the good news is only one of my three scheduled virtual assistants actually showed up for the interview. And that was you, Dex, and you got hired. And we've been doing a lot of amazing things here for Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. To give everyone an idea of what Dex does, he edits our audio, he posts and formats our blog posts on our WordPress site, libertyentrepreneurs.com. And he's not just the podcast guy for me. I know his title's Virtual Podcast Manager, but he also does research for me. He's helping me build an e-commerce site, CryptoGear.io, and he's also managing my newest virtual assistant who is helping with web design and web development. So Dexter is a very, very well-rounded virtual assistant. He's got a lot of skills and a wide array of sets. So, Dexter, uh, do you mind just introducing yourself? Tell us a little bit about you, where you live, how old you are, and just what you're passionate about. Yeah, my name is Dexter, and I live here in Davao City, Philippines. I love photography. Like I love taking pictures of babies and um, my pets. I have two dogs, uh, two large breed dogs. They are Rottweilers. And tell us about like, what is it like going to school in the Philippines? And I know you went to a vocational school, right? An, an IT vocational school. What was that like? And, and just give us an idea of how that started to prepare you to work in the BPO and virtual assistant field. Yeah, about my school days. Like before I actually went to college, I started working in a grocery store, like I was packing goods and then I was assigned to a baggage counter. Due to financial problem, I never had a chance to go to college right after my high school. So I had to save up money for me to be able to go to college. I had an opportunity to look for a scholarship. So I took an exam for that scholarship and luckily I was ranked three on that examination. So I was very happy because they will be the one who's paying my tuition fee every month. And uh, also I had an allowance. So it's really, mm. I'm really grateful for the government who gave me a chance to avail their scholarship. I took a two year IT information technology course. That time I actually feel bad because I never had a chance to go to college because here in the Philippines, it's really a big deal if you have a bachelor degree. When you apply to any job, they have a special treatment to those who are college um, graduate, like a four-year course graduate. Compared to us, 
uh, who graduated as a technical in a technical school. But what I appreciate is in other countries, they prefer uh, skilled worker. Yeah, yeah, Dex. That's a really good point, Dex, because, you know, I mean, I know you listen to the show because you edit the audio for us. And you'll know that a lot of the guests that I have on, we talk about how important is college really? Is it just a kind of like a game now that they tell high school students to go through and it's just something that you have to do kind of a cultural thing and people may look down on you if you don't have a four-year bachelor degree but in your experience Dex were how held back were you or what type of opportunities did you miss or how do you feel you compared work-wise and talent-wise against some of your peers and friends who did have four-year degrees when you only had a two-year degree? After my two-year course, I actually applied in a call center. I worked there, and then it's surprising that I didn't encounter any discrimination when I was in call center. My workmates are, I feel like we are the same level. Right. So I started as a technical support representative. It's a chat support. So basically, it's a VOIP service that you can make free calls to U.S., Canada, U.S. Virgin Islands for free. All you need to have is just an internet connection and then an actual telephone handset that you can use, or you can use your headset and a computer. Yeah, so let's talk about that. What was it like in your first call center job, and, and what were your hours, and you know, give us an idea how much you were getting paid and how you were treated, and etc. It was a big adjustment for me because first, I don't know or I don't have any background what are the jobs in the call center because I just heard people saying they wanted to apply to a call center and there's a need for me to, to get a job after my graduation because I want to save up again for me to be able to go to college, like take up a four-year course. And then... It's hard because my training started 3 a.m. And then I live like in a very, very far place from the actual call center office. So if my training is 3 a.m., I had to wake up 10 p.m. to prepare. And then I will start my travel time by 11 because it's already late at night. And then it's hard for me to get a jeepney or someone that I can ride to go to the office. So I really have to make sure that I need to be in the office like at least an hour before my shift because I need to study about the lessons in the training. So it, it was really hard. Right. And a jeepney is a bus, right, that you can catch and it'll it'll take you around town or take you different places. Yes, it's actually a like a small bus. I had to ride three times before I can get to the office. And then the waiting time is like 30 to 45 minutes from my place because uh, the jeepney has a capacity of 20 passengers and it will not move if it's incomplete. So we need to wait for the jeepney to be filled in, like 20 passengers before it will move. And then I will, I will be dropped again to a different station and then ride another jeepney and then go to the office. Right. How many jeepneys did you have to take and how long did it take you to travel from your house to your office? Yeah, from our house, I need to ride a motorcycle going to the station of the first jeepney. And then from the first jeepney, I need to drop again uh, to the next station and then I ride another jeepney just to go to the office. So two jeepneys, one motorcycle. And that will take me almost three hours, including the waiting time. Right. So it took you three hours just to get to work. And then, of course, you had to work, what, an eight or nine hour shift? Yes. And sometimes if there's a lot of customers asking or needing our help, then basically we are forced to do overtime so sometimes I work 12 hours or 13 hours a day. Right. And then you'd have to ride three hours to get back home, right? Yes. And sometimes I just use or I, I just sleep inside a jeepney. Oh, I'm sure because it would only be a couple hours until you need to do it all over again. Yes. I need to be strategic. Like if I have a time to nap inside a jeepney, then I will. Right. And what year was this, Dexter? When was this happening? I started last 2008. I worked there for that uh, company 
for three years and then you know three years in a company and then you keep on doing the same thing it will really burn you out that will make you like dragging yourself from your bed going to the office and then it's hard because for my entire three years it was my training days that I was in the morning shift but it's super early morning like 3 a.m. and then after that I worked from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. and then there are times that I need to work at 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. so it's really mm. graveyard yeah and you're working those hours so that you can um, assist clients in the United States is that why yes we need to make sure that it's morning in the US but since it's actually a 24 hour um, service but there are other agents who are actually are the tenured one they are assigned in the morning shift and since we are uh, newbies we are assigned at the night shift so that's very ah, struggle right and how was it did you interact and did you interact with management a lot or did, did you have other managers like virtual assistant managers like yourself i know you weren't a virtual assistant then this is the the business what is it called bpo business what does that stand for yeah it's a business process outsourcing and um, right. yeah, our clients are from U United States, and then there are also clients from UK, United Kingdom, and right. uh, yeah, from other parts of the world. And how do you feel that you were treated whenever you were working in the call center job? I know you had to work the graveyard shift. Like, were, were they at least like welcoming and friendly, or or did they not treat you very well, or what? What was the in work environment like? Yeah, the work environment is really, really fun. Like uh, people there are really friendly. But then when you reach about three years in a company, so it started to the policies, the company policies, they're trying to revise it and then it's more strict than before. And then so I stayed there with my friends. Uh, the reason why I stayed there it's because of my friends and then also it's hard for me to start again different call center or different campaign but i want to have an, a morning shift so i tried to to apply to a different call center but unfortunately i never got the morning schedule again i get a pay a higher salary from the second mm. call center I work there as a customer service representative. It's a company in UK. They're selling LED lights. We were hired just to apologize to the customers. They ordered the product like two, three months ago, but they haven't received it. So what we need to do is just apologize to the customers and then uh, make sure that we need to make a report and then make sure it's a high priority. Contact the uh, distributor and then make sure that uh, it will be delivered to their house so that campaign mm. runs for three months and then uh, so happy because we were able to help uh, those customers and then I was transferred again to a different campaign it's a medical insurance so it's surprising because I never had a chance or I don't have any background with the medical terms our training uh, lasts for one week only. So I, I spoke to my manager, like I told him that I can't do this, can't be part of this account because I don't have any any background. Even if I study now, like for one week, it's really hard for me to help those people who are asking about their medical uh, insurance. We also need to require some medical certificate from them, which I don't. I'm not familiar with the terms. Then we are all inexperienced about that campaign. So the campaign lasts for one month only and then it was dissolved. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that you had gotten uh, you know, a slight raise at some point when, mm -hmm. when you were working for the call center. Even though you weren't able to get a morning shift, at least they started paying you more for, for your night shift. Can you give us an idea in Filipino pesos how much you were making back then? I know that was like 2008, 2009, 2010. But do you remember what you were making in pesos back then? Yeah, for the first call center job, I started with 10,000. And then after two years from 10,000 to 12, and then when I transferred to a different call center, since I already have an experience, so basically they offered me a higher salary. So they, they gave me 16,000. For that, okay. this is ten to sixteen thousand pesos per month, right? Yeah, per month. Right. So it takes you three hours to get into work. You had to work for eight hours, or maybe more some days. 
Mm-hmm. And then yeah. you had to travel three hours back from work. So that's eight plus three, 11, then plus another three. You know, I mean, that's like 14, maybe 15 hours a day that you are having to put into the call center and they were paying you between 10 and 16,000 pesos. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. So for my U.S. listeners, 10,000 pesos is uh, $200 U.S. dollars per month and 16,000 pesos is around 320 U.S. dollars per month. So Dex, I I feel like you are doing a, a lot of traveling and a lot of work. For that salary, I, you get paid quite a bit better as a virtual assistant, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I paid a lot better. So tell us what life is like now, and you know, just to t- let everyone know, I paid Dexter uh, three hundred and fifty U.S. dollars per month, and he gets to work from home, and he, there's no travel time, there, there's no buses, there's no you have to be at work an hour early, and you work four hours a day, right, Dex? Right. And I got to work with the things that I really love. So I must um, say thank you to those two people who didn't show up during the your interview with them because I got hired <laughs> by you for cool, <laughs> the coolest client. I must say thank you to them. <laughs> You're welcome, Dex. I don't even remember their names. I actually might still have them on Skype, although they never showed up. Y- you know, it's uh, it- it's been a real pleasure working with you, Dex. Can you give us an idea like what it was like for you to start thinking about leaving the call center and going to work as a virtual assistant and and what you know was that scary were your friends doing it did you have any resources or did how did you learn about being a virtual assistant and just what, what does it mean because it sounds like it's a much better deal for you than working at a call center i jumped from a call center to a different call center and then i get the same job like night shift and then i saw a friend on facebook she posted about being a virtual assistant so i don't have any idea what is a virtual assistant before so i tried to google it and then i find it interesting because i believe that i can learn so much more than what i do in call center because i just take calls I just go to the office, take calls, and then I know already what is the problem with that customer asking or asking for some help. But unlike if being a virtual assistant, it's very dynamic. Every day you will encounter different problems. So that makes you your brain not being stagnant, unlike in call center. I saw a company here in the Philippines hiring for a virtual assistant. I grabbed the opportunity, applied to them, and then undergone a training. It was just a super basic training. I still have to go to Google, I check YouTube in everything that I do. Like before, like my client before is from Canada. She's a parenting coach. So she wanted me to be expert in the tools that she's using. She don't want me to be just to know the tools are, but she wanted to be to be the expert. So I really have to exert more effort to do excellent job to my client. Yeah, I, I know that from us talking previously, you had mentioned how repetitive the call center job is and how you do the same thing every day. And anyone knows it's worked at a desk job or worked at any type of job, if you're doing the same thing all the time, it gets really boring. You get tired of it. You know, you start wishing that you were working on something else, something more exciting, something that you can learn from. And it just doesn't sound like that's the case with the call center job. But with a virtual assistant job, I mean, like you said, I'm having you do all sorts of stuff all the time. Yes, of course, you're editing the podcast, you're creating the art, but the art's different every time. Right. You're I ask you to go research and, you know, building an e-commerce website and you do design for me. And it just seems like a much more dynamic and enjoyable job. Dex, would you ever at this point consider going back into a call center? No, definitely. No, (laughs) not anymore, because I really love exercising my brain here. Yeah. It's much more entrepreneurial, too, isn't it? To be a virtual assistant. And it's more fun working at home and working at your own place at your own time. 
Yeah, it's so amazing. You know, I'm thank you for calling me a really cool <laughs> boss or a really cool client, Dex. I, I really appreciate that. You know, I, we're going to have several more episodes of season one here, how to work with a virtual assistant or working with a virtual assistant. We're not sure what the name is yet, Dex, but we'll figure it out. But, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in the next episode when you and I chat to talk about the freedom and the flexibility associated with a virtual assistant position and how both virtual assistants can earn trust and how the clients or the entrepreneurs can earn trust with the virtual assistant so that everyone can have an enjoyable home-based position, right? A, a home-based work opportunity because nobody needs to go travel three hours by bus to go into a call center and then travel three hours by bus to go back home every day, especially when you can make more money working four hours from the comfort of your own home, working, you know, on a flexible schedule. It's, it's just a, such a better opportunity for you guys out in the Philippines, isn't it, Dex? Yeah, we're very thankful that we were able to join this group of people who are virtual assistant, and then we learned from them, and now we are building our own business with a Liberty VAs. Yeah, oh yeah, baby. Liberty VAs and Liberty Entrepreneurs. We're building an empire. I hope this episode was so valuable to anyone who's listening. If you are curious about a virtual assistant, uh, but you've never hired one, maybe you've never hired anyone, you know, this is a great way for you to get some management experience, but also add someone to your team and just start working every single day with someone who has is experienced in different software tools you know like dexter has photography experience I've, I've definitely benefited from his artistic side and you're going to be able to have someone help you build your company and help you build freedom and they win the virtual assistant wins because they get new experiences and learn new tools i know dex whenever i had you start using audacity to edit audio you considered that uh, a software upgrade which i love that term and whenever I'm able to help you learn that software upgrade and delegate a task to you, that's like a level up for me because now I've just freed up some more of my time. So it's a, it's a really great opportunity for both virtual assistants and entrepreneurs to work together. There's a ton to learn here. You're going to learn a lot about communication. You know, that's what we're going to talk about in the next episode of season one, working with a virtual assistant with my first virtual assistant. Dexter. Dex, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I really appreciate all the hard work you do. Uh, I think it's about time you get a raise. What do you think? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. And yeah. <laughs> all right, Dex. Well, uh, enjoy editing this audio and we're going to get it posted soon, buddy. I'll see you on another episode of Liberty Entrepreneur soon. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to season one, episode two of Liberty Entrepreneurs podcast, working with a virtual assistant. The title of this episode has been creating a win-win by hiring a virtual assistant. And I really hope you found some value in the discussions and the conversations that Dexter and I just shared with you. Remember, I've created a home base for you at libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash season and the number one. All the show notes associated with these episodes will be included there and you can go and subscribe via RSS or by email and receive all of these episodes each Wednesday. If you have two extra minutes, it really helps out the show if you can go and leave a review. If you leave a review on your favorite podcast app, I've included the links below for Stitcher and iTunes radio tune in radio google play youtube you know anywhere you'd like to leave us a review and subscribe would be awesome we're a growing podcast and we're trying to put as much value into these shows as possible so thank you so much if you do also if you have an idea for a show topic something that you would like to hear about uh, specifically about hiring and working with and delegating to a virtual assistant send us an email at info at libertyentrepreneurs.com or shoot us a message on our Facebook page. Uh, it's Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. 
Next week's episode will concentrate on ways to effectively communicate. Since our virtual assistants and our virtual teams do not work in the same office environment with us, it's even more important to be able to use language to communicate our ideas to our virtual team because we don't have the eye contact or the body language that we would typically have in a more standard office setting. So tune in next week to hear my top tips on ways to effectively communicate with your virtual assistant so you can start delegating tasks and building your own freedom. Until next time, this is Ash signing off. Peace.